Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at how you can change the navigational source for the navigational autopilot on the Cessna 172. Uh, keep in mind the process for this is pretty much valid for any aircraft that uses anything. It's just a matter of finding the right button and making sure it makes sense. Go ahead and get started. So first things first, uh, we're sitting here, uh, this is just over Groton, and we're here in uh, southern Connecticut. Uh, it's a fun little airport. Uh, for some reason in the real world, it is always stupid bumpy. One of the neat things to see, of course, when you come here is you have the U.S. Naval Base, where we have a bunch of nuclear submarines just sort of, you know, chilling on the coast. That doesn't a big deal or anything. But that's not the focus today. The focus is this lovely, lovely thing that provides us with navigational information. Now, what a roll autopilot does is it's basically going to either hold a specific heading, it's going to hold a specific bank angle, it's going to hold you level, or it's going to automatically level the plane or roll the plane in such a way that will get you to a specific uh, direction or specific course. Now, the way we do that is by simply selecting what course we want to travel on and then what the source of the course. <laughs> Sounds kind of funny when we say it that way. So we have three different sources of courses that we can use. Sounds like I'm a Dr. Seuss character. The first one is going to be the GPS source. This simply means we're using whatever the current GPS's waypoint as our navigational goal. It's actually a little more complicated than that because with the GPS waypoint, you're actually flying a route. You're not flying direct to it unless you tell it to do direct. When we have this selected, if we actually want to be able to go ahead and swing this over to actually use it to go to a specific point, we have to select a point under GPS. Now, if I come over to my flight plan, you'll notice there's nothing here right now. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go up to Direct 2, and I'm simply going to go ahead and pick up a random waypoint that's a little bit to the north of us, just to demonstrate what this is going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and pick on K. We'll go up to a Westover Air Force Base, because, you know, why not? In the real world, I wouldn't land there unless they have an air show or something going on that day. It doesn't really make a big difference. Oh, we accidentally. So I'm going to go over here, switch this to the letter F. Press Enter, Enter. And now we've selected it. Notice over here on my chart that it will now go ahead and show me that I've got this magenta line. We're not actually following this magenta line unless this here says GPS ENR, meaning en route, and we are activated our navigation autopilot. So I'm going to swing over here, press nav mode, and now this aircraft is actually being guided by information from the GPS to keep us onto this little magenta line of safety. So the interesting thing is we don't always want to follow the magenta line of safety. There may be times when we're using something like a VOR or an ILS or you know, any of those kind of techniques or even an LDA. So to do that, we're going to have to switch the source of navigational data here. Switch the source, the nav source source. So to do that, what we're going to do before we touch anything is we're going to make sure that our aircraft has heading hold selected. Now, one of the reasons I tell people to do this is a common mistake is you switch sources, start cranking needles, and all of a sudden the aircraft is facing, you know, down there somewhere. And all of a sudden you're like, ah, how did that happen? So what I always like to do is I wait for the aircraft to go ahead and settle on its current heading and current horse, which is I'm going to be a little bit over to the right. No, I didn't say horse. I said course. It's your imagination. So we're going to come a little bit over here to the right. Let's go make sure my RPM's right. A little bit too high anyway. I could use a little bit of cruise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push down on the heading button, which is going to go ahead and select our current heading as my desired heading. I'm going to activate the heading mode. Again, this works for any aircraft. Now that it's been selected, I'm going to come down here and press the CDI button. Notice it says VOR1. If I press CDI again, it's going to say VOR2, simply meaning this is the current source of our roll program. If I press CDI one more time, you'll notice it switches to GPS en route. So let's go ahead and pick up some different radiation, uh, radiation, radio frequencies. It's been quite a week. Let's go over to, uh, we'll do 11490 for one of ours, which should be HFD. Now if I press CDI, you'll notice I can now select my course. I believe I'm getting yelled at by the radio here every once in a while. I'm not sure what that is. Ha ha ha. Solid. So now what we can do is we can actually select the course without the aircraft turn, turning and banking and going all over the sky on us. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and select my course here. I know I'm roughly heading in that direction. So uh, let's see here. It's going to be off to my right. I'm going to go ahead and grab onto the course knob here. And we can just go ahead here and crank this sucker until it uh, set, settles a little bit for us. Oh, that's coming from. We don't want to do that. We want this to be pointing to. And we're just going to keep coming until the needle goes swinging on us. There it goes. Now, if I press nav, we're going to be using the VOR1 as our source. So I'm going to press nav, and now the aircraft is going to start banking to the left as it attempts to acquire this particular bearing. Now, the interesting thing here is you notice I'm now off course because these two don't coincide with each other. So we're going to go ahead and line ourselves up roughly, roughly with that VOR, and we're going to show you how to go back to what we did before. So this is going to get us eh, fairly well established here. Again, we're going to come off. Keep in mind when you're in VOR mode, the innate inaccuracy of VOR is going to cause your aircraft to go like this. 
almost like kind of like an infinity sign across the sky the entire time as it tries to lock onto it, especially if you've got windy days. So I'm happy with that so far. So uh, now what if we wanted to go ahead and use another VOR station? Okay, we can do that too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and push in this button. It's gonna switch to my nav two frequency. I'll go ahead and pick a different one. We'll go 11560 here. That's gonna be in the eastern side of Connecticut. Let's see if it picks it up. Ooh, we're a little up. There it is, 11560 PVD. So now if I wanted to follow that, all I have to do is come over here, do my heading piece again, press heading select, and now I can press CDI again, and now it's gonna allow me to select this new VOR that I can actually go ahead and follow. So in this case, I'm gonna leave that side alone. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my course. Notice as I swing this course around that that needle is gonna start going ahead and acquiring itself. Now I happen to know that in order to get to that particular destination, we're heading in the opposite direction we're gonna to need to be traveling in. So I'm actually gonna spin us around. You know, Providence is uh, pretty significantly in the other direction here. There we go, and we have it nice and lined up. Now you're probably saying, oh, okay, so push the nav button. You got it. And now the aircraft is turning to now acquire this particular radial of this particular navigational source. Now, again, you can see how wonderfully useful that is because you can have multiple navigational sources all preloaded into the computer and you can pick whatever navigational source you need just by pressing the CDI button. Like I was saying, make sure navigation is disabled for your own sanity before you switch to the navigational source so the aircraft doesn't do one of these on you. This is especially true if you're flying a high-performance aircraft. Other than that, hopefully this was helpful. Enjoy.